You know, I was pondering Psalm 78 and verse 40 and 41, please. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Should we keep limiting God? I don't know, I must ask some of you husbands one question. <laughs> there are a few husbands here. Did you ever comb your, try to comb your wife's hair? I see you smirking. <laughs> oh well. You know, I'm no great adept at such things. But when my wife could not lift her hands and her muscles began to degenerate, I had to help her a little. You see, and she tells me, or oh, she now proclaims the fact that she sat in one of the meetings with people, simple people, a hundred thousand nearly in that meeting. Faith, all of them practically drawn to that place because of the acts of faith. And God touched her and healed her. So, our trust in God we trust. How sad if we renege on that trust. They limited the Holy One of Israel. My dear friends, it's like telling the sun, look, you better shine on Sebring only tomorrow morning. We we'll limit you to this little spot. Can anybody do that? No. But yet we limit our living Savior. Now if you look at the 19th verse of 78 Psalm, yea, they spoke against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Now, of course, that seems like a very no natural question. Some of you evidently have never been in a wilderness. I have. Where nothing grows except thorny bushes. And everything is browned off. Cinder dry. Can just go up in a flame. But somehow the venomous creature still managed to live. And you must watch your step that you don't tread on some very venomous serpent or creature. Now, can God can God do this? I'm sure that question should have come to many of us or in many situations. Can God? Everything looks so bleak. Everything looks so dark. Can God change this situation? 
can god you know the senate made a resolution asking the president to call for a day of prayer and humiliation a day of prayer and humiliation they said and the president proclaimed such a national day there are voices today purporting to be wise voices which get a hearing in washington that are voices from hell so history is all to be set aside even the noble history of a legislation which requests the president for a day of prayer and humiliation You see that's the last word that we want to hear today. Humbling is the very last word. People are just too proud. Proud of what? Proud of creating a pile of debt? Proud of what? Proud of proud of did creating or producing dysfunctional classrooms can't we humble ourselves oh my dear people it is a sad hour when anybody in this pulpit cannot humble himself anybody who stands in the name of jesus that is fellows like me if we cannot humble ourselves war to the people war to that country let my prime let my priest weep between the porch and the altar says god yes so much of the fault lies in us in the pulpit limiting god and showing unfaith why am i here what am i doing here lecturing to you for a paycheck what am i what's my business here my business here is to see that you get faith in the living god the just shall live by faith if i don't give you that if our services don't enhance our faith and we say oh, oh yes we will cope with this and much more in the strength of god if our faith does not rise to the need and the occasion what kind of faith is that so today when everybody is grumbling oh if we also start grumbling what what faith is that everybody keeps complaining everyone is gloomy and despondent and you and i also say yes yes things are bleak no silver lining has yet appeared if we are not able to inject some faith are we not doing a disservice to our neighbors to our friends 
my dear people can god you know the you have to reverse this and say god can instead of saying god can furnish a table there's a big question mark here and if you look at the 21st verse therefore the lord heard this and was wroth so a fire was kindled against jacob and anger also came up against israel because they believed not in god and trusted not in his salvation you see the lord was grieved the lord was angry earlier we have read that he was grieved now we hear that he was wroth verse 32 for all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble now this is a very clear description of what happens when there is unfaith they spent their years consumed their years in vanity and their years in trouble now when we start examining ourselves what did i what did i achieve in the last 2 3 years what did i really achieve just put it down did you consume those years in vanity or as god says and their years in trouble troubling yourself you know when we don't trust god we trouble ourselves and trouble a lot of people around us you know a sense of responsibility seems to leave us i am surprised at this i do not know how god began to teach me in spite of my foolishness a sense of responsibility no i don't know how far the boundaries of your responsibility extend you see do you feel responsible for anybody else you know anyone who lives unto himself must be pitied their life is very miserable you know i can oh when the middle of the night there comes before me an array of persons people needs not one of them to do with my comfort not one of them to do with money but the burdens now do i ever say oh that's none of my immediate responsibility no as a matter of fact as you well know i am a traveling person and whenever i return to the united states i have to catch up on the present news how were things so it takes me a little while before i get my teeth into the job again 
because I in the distant places where I labor, in the midst of all the work I have, it's simply not possible. When I switch over to England or the continent or to Asia or any other place, I have to concentrate on that area. But the responsibility keeps growing. You know, there is a temptation to say, when is this responsibility going to stop growing? Am I going to stop establishing new centers, new missionary bases, saying, oh my, I, I, I can't handle any more. No, that's not my commission. My commission is to every creature. Have I fulfilled that commission? No. So if Jesus asked me, did you fulfill the commission? I can only say no. So a sense of responsibility, my dear people. When you don't grow in a sense of responsibility, it's quite evident that you are not growing at all spiritually. We are responsible for our neighbors. We are responsible for Washington, D.C. We are responsible for the country. Can't you see that, my friends? So when we look at the 32nd verse, for all this they sinned and believed not for his wondrous works. They consumed their years and days in vanity. And 36th verse, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. You know, some of the songs which we sing, are they not words of flattery? We don't act upon them. You know, there is a song chorus, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And when I see people singing that, I say, but do they carry this through? Do they follow these words in practice? I would rather sing how Jesus loves me. Because I do fault myself for my small love for Jesus. You, you please pray for me. I need more love, more love for my Savior. They lied to him. They flattered him with their hymns and their songs. But there was no follow through. You know, one of the ways by which Jackie, the first lady, after the president's death, was won by Onassis, the shipping magnet of Greek, Greek origin. He was a Greek. And became his wife. It seems every day one of the costliest rings, diamond rings, 
from a jeweler in Paris would be delivered to her every day. before breakfast. One of the most expensive rings to be purchased. Now, my dear friends, is there any special token that we give to Jesus every day? This is a mark of my love, Lord Jesus. You know, the people of the world seem to beat us when it comes to certain practical steps. I wish the church were not full of talkers. My dear people, and so God sums it up this way. They flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. You know, I don't have the time to complete my message. But we shan't do this. It's not flattery that we will give to God. It will be, it must be a real pregnant truthful giving of ourselves into his hands. Do with me, Lord, whatever is pleasing in your eyes. The God of Abraham who took Isaac to the altar and was named thereafter Jehovah Jireh. His name can't be altered. You can't alter that name. I can't alter that name. Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. In the mountain of the Lord it shall be found. Are we going to trust the name of God? Suppose I come to one of you and say, Hey, I don't believe your name, fella. Would you stomach that insult? Or you would go this way? I wouldn't blame you, you know. <laughs> if you sent me to the dentist, Hey, I don't believe your name. Is that not what you keep saying to God? I don't believe your name. It's only my contriving that will procure me anything. My God will supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Let us tell God. Oh God, give me the faith of which the Bible speaks of. Give me this faith. How dare I limit God. And then come to you and flatter and speak lies. They flatter me. They lie to me. No, Lord. No, Lord. Oh, my Father, have mercy upon us. Give us true faith and true love to you 
and for you, Lord Jesus. We ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen.